So my question is, I was wondering if you could speak to uh, the art of allowing, because what I find, at least for myself, and is uh, that speaking to the art of allowance, like allowing something to come into your sphere of being or your existence, but then the question that reverberates around my mind is, but how? Or like, how do I do that? How do I do this? How do I do that? So step one is ask, step two is source answers, and step three is allow it. These days, we're calling it allowing, but we're saying to you, in order to allow, you got to be in the receiving mode. Can't allow it if you're not on that vibrational frequency. And so it really is by thinking and feeling and thinking and feeling and thinking and feeling. That's how you discover your own ability to focus in productive, beneficial ways. But humans make it harder than it needs to be because you're not that good at being willing just to find a satisfying thought. Have you been listening to us for a while? We've been talking about the emotional scale where appreciation and love feel really good and depression and fear and despair feel really bad. And there are a range of emotions in between. And today what we're saying to you is don't try to go from despair to appreciation. Just go from less satisfying to more satisfying. Because you can feel when you're reaching for a thought that feels a little better and you can feel when you're reaching for a thought that doesn't. The other day Esther was thinking a thought and she said to herself, now that's just dumb. You're focusing on a thought that you know doesn't feel good. Why are you doing that? And Part of it was a habit, it was a habitual thought. Part of it was because a lot of other people were thinking the same thought, so it was easier to go there. But she could tell by her focus on it how not beneficial it was to her. And so that's really what it comes down to. You have to care about how you feel. We've been teaching meditation for a long while because when you meditate, you quiet your mind. And when you quiet your mind, you stop thought. And when you stop thought, you stop resistant thought. And then your vibration rises. And if you do that on a consistent basis, it makes you more sensitive to the thoughts that feel a little better and the thoughts that feel not so good. So sometimes people think that what we mean by art of allowing is just be really tolerant of others. Look out into the world and see terrible things and just don't make a fuss over them. And if you don't make a fuss over something, then you're tolerant and allowing. But that isn't what we mean. We mean allowing your connection with your source. And that's precise. For example, let's say you're watching television and you see a news broadcast that's really pushing hard against something. And it bothers you a lot when you see it. Well, the reason it bothers you is because your inner being is not looking at that in that way. So you've chosen an attitude or an opinion about something that your inner being isn't choosing, which means it's not beneficial to you. Your thought is detrimental to you. Well, it's not easy as humans to sort that out because there are so many thoughts you think that you believe that you should think because so many people think them. Esther said to us in the beginning, but Abraham, it's true. It's true, so therefore, I'm not inappropriate to think this thought because a lot of people are thinking this thought, and after all, it's true, and shouldn't I focus on what's true? And it took us a while to convince her that the reason it's true is because people have thought about it. And if she wants it to be true for her, then she can keep thinking about it. But if it's uncomfortable as she's thinking about it, it's going to get more and more uncomfortable as this unwanted thought turns to an unwanted thing because everything is in the state of becoming. And so this all comes around to just deciding, hey, I got to focus. I got to focus, but I'm not focusing my thoughts. I'm focusing my emotions. I'm feeling my way to it. Now, something that will help you a lot. This is really good. If you can make the distinction between a thought that I'm thinking and a thought that I'm receiving. Because the goal is to get tuned in so that you can receive that broader point of view, the advantage point of view. So... A lot of thoughts that you are thinking don't feel that good. And it just means give it a rest for a little while. Because in thinking the thought that doesn't feel good, you've also done step one and put a whole lot of questions and requests for solutions into your vortex. And so your inner being is all over it. Your inner being is creating a route for you, a specific route just for you because your inner being knows what all your resistant points are. So your inner being knows exactly how to answer your question. 
Your inner being knows exactly how to get you there. So you kind of got to relax and stop thinking and start receiving. Have you ever? Oh, you have. This will help you. So imagine that somebody has asked you a question about something that you're very skilled at and you know the answer and you know how to lead them. So you begin to tell them, but they won't stop talking. They won't stop talking. They won't stop telling you what they think and what they've tried that didn't work. And you're wanting to say, you ask me a question. I'm going to give you an answer if you'll just give it a rest, but they won't stop talking. They just keep writhing around in their dilemma while you have a very clear view of what would help them, but they won't stop talking. Well, you're just like that. For the most part, we like to characterize it this way. When you decided to come into your physical body, it was your intention to mix it up with life and spend about 10% of your time developing questions and problems that go into your vortex that source will help you answer. And you intended to spend about 90% of your time in happy thoughts, in blissful thoughts, in restful states, in appreciative states, so that you could be the receiver of the answers to the questions. But most humans have that flipped. Most of you writhe in your question. Just keep asking and asking and asking, but it's not working out for me and it hardly is working out for anybody and it didn't work out for my parents. We just want to say to you, just give it a rest. Just quiet your mind. Stop all that activity about what isn't wanted. And when you do that, because your question is so vivid and so pointed and so focused, because you've been working on it for a while, when you cool your jets and you stop arguing for your limitations, you'll come out of one of those meditative states and you'll receive an idea. You got that? The next thing is don't need the first idea to be the blockbuster of all blockbusters of all blockbuster ideas. Let it be a thought about moving furniture because if you're not thinking about, well, how's that going to get me to where I want to be, which puts you right back over here, but you're just following the thought. Why? Because it felt good. A good feeling thought will lead to another one and another one and another one. And eventually you'll be to the blockbusting idea, to the blockbusting unfolding, to the solution that is really apparent to you and all others. So your question was, I get the concept of allowing and receiving, but how do I accomplish it? And we say, by being willing to be ready, to be ready, to be ready, to be ready. By being willing to allow the satisfaction to be enough as you go along. That really is the answer. Because, you see, anytime you ask anything, your inner being has a full-blown answer. But your beliefs don't let you hear it. If you knew how smart your inner being is, how we're all together and we know the answer to your dilemmas, but you can't hear them because you're all wadded up in your problems, you see. You got that, didn't you? Ready to be 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 ready. And just relax into that unfolding. It requires a little bit of trust. We know it's what religions call faith. It's faith in the process. And we're asking a lot of you, we're saying, here you are in your bodies and you say, yeah, we know we can see us. We can see us. You don't have to tell us about that part. We've got that. And we say, and as you've been living, you're asking for things that you haven't let yourself have yet. And you say, yeah, you don't have to tell us that either, Abraham. We know that too. And we say, yeah, but what you might not know is that you've been projecting these vibrations and you say, oh crap, <laughs> vibrations, vibrations. And when am I going to get my money out of the vortex and into the bank, Abraham? In other words, I've been listening to this vibration stuff long enough. And we say, we've got to help you to know that there is a vibrational beingness of the things you want that you have to tune into and allow yourself to perceive them in more and more specific beingness. In a rational way, look at your planet, look at it over the last hundred years or 200 years, notice the difference in the economy and the difference in the lifestyle, and then acknowledge that there are no pipelines to other planets. There's not some other physical reality that's trucking this stuff in. Where is it coming from? It's thoughts turning to things. The resources are all here vibrationally, and you are tuning in 
And it is your perception that is allowing the perception of the things of your life experience. Now, we know that's hard to hear because this seems like a very tangible, real thing. And when a lot of you think about things, you turn them into really, in other words, this is a belief system. This is a very powerful thing to believe in. It is so real that you'd be hard pressed to deny the reality of this. And you keep wanting everything to be this kind of real. You're not willing to let it be this kind of real and 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 this kind of real. For this kind of real, it takes seeing it and feeling it and hearing it touching it. In other words, you're translating this reality with all of your physical senses. And eventually there will be a lot of realities that you will be able to translate with your physical senses. But in the meantime, if you need to translate them with your physical senses so much so that you're not willing to trust the vibrational nature of them, then you're not ever going to get more than what you've already got. See how it works? You kind of followed us on that, didn't you? You're realists and you are tangibleness and we get that and it's a good thing because this leading edge tangible reality it is the leading edge it's what everything that we have all lived before is pointed to we're not trying to get you to ignore the real stuff and get off in some airy fairy world and be happy with ideas rather than tangibles that's not what we're wanting to accomplish we're showing you the path of least resistance to your tangibles your tangibles that matter, the reality that matters. And so if you can just not need it to be tangible right now, and you can enjoy the idea of it and enjoy what's leading you to it, we promise you everything that you want will be tangible. It will be manifested in that satisfying way. And so... The art of allowing, that's why we call it an art. It's just not fall out of bed and discover it. You have to teach it to yourself. You have to talk yourself into it. It's the art of feeling good anyway. It's the art of recognizing the vibrational essence of something and taking delight in its vibrational essence and in the maturation of its vibrational essence and not demanding that it be all the way matured before you're willing to give it your attention. We've never said it bigger or better than that. Yeah, yeah. Enough? Enough. Really good.